Hello again, I'm Paul Beckwith, and I'm continuing my discussion on the engineering behind marine cloud brightening. Brightening clouds over the ocean, low-level clouds that are just um, maybe a kilometer, a kilometer and a half above the surface of the ocean. Okay, if we brighten the clouds that form in this region, they reflect tremendous amounts of sunlight and can actually cool the surface. So the idea is to use autonomous ships, the fleet of autonomous ships that are on hydrofoils that are powered by something called Flettner rotors, which are, about, which are more efficient than existing sailboats and they're conducive to being controlled by uh, you know, computer control. Um, and they're much more reliable than a sailboat, but they're powered by the wind. And we have spray nozzles on these ships, which are engineered to generate, take seawater, pump it to very, very high pressures, run it through very, very small orifices to get a stream of liquid coming out. And then that liquid breaks up by Raleigh instability to produce these water droplets containing, you know, seawater with salt concentrations at about three and a half percent. So 800 nanometers or 0.8 micron size water drops. When the water, if the water completely evaporates, we're left with about a 200 nanometer salt crystal. Okay, which is 0.2 micron. If the water, if the evaporation of the water is such that there's a salt crust that forms on the outside, you know, it might be about 400 nanometers or 0.4 micron size. But we generate these droplets. These droplets are then carried by the natural turbulence in the boundary layer and they mix and they get up to this, you know, a kilometer, kilometer and a half above the surface and they act as a cloud condensation nuclei um, over the ocean to form uniform clouds of very, very high reflectivity, uniform size. Okay, so the water droplets then coalesce onto the salt crystals and form very small water droplets in these clouds, and they're extremely highly reflective. And we position these ships uh, depending on the time of year and what we want to achieve and we can get cooling and this buys us time to deploy to, to slash fossil fuel emissions and to do carbon dioxide removal techniques okay so this is a solar radiation management technique that is using that is that, that is using salt water seawater and then the evaporation and taking using the salt crystals of a certain engineered size to cause cooling for long periods of time by generating these bright marine level clouds. Okay, so that's the whole idea. And the engineering has been thought of in great detail for many, many years by Stephen Salter at the University of Edinburgh. So this is where I finished off the last video where it showed the water jet you know, one water jet that would come through the filter and then it would generate these droplets and you would, these droplets would be the nozzle size and the characteristics of the nozzle would allow these to be about 800 nanometer or 0.8 micron in size. Okay, so this is a schematic of the device. Okay, so this is a silicon wafer here with these holes drilled in it. Um, and when you have the high pressure water coming in on one side, it generates all of these streams of water, which then break up into the, and forming the micro droplets due to the Raleigh instability. Okay, so these are some of the characteristics. Um, so this is the, the nozzle diameter. Okay, so to get a drop diameter of 800 nanometers or 0.8 micron, we need a nozzle diameter of about 380 um, nanometers. Okay, this is the pressure. Um, so we need a very we need a high pressure 
uh, it would be, in this case, it was about 75 or so bar to generate 800 nanometer droplets. This is the frequency of the droplets that come out. So for 800 nanometer droplets, it's about 25 megahertz is the frequency. And the power per ship in kilowatts, you know, pretty flat, but for 800 nanometers, you know, it's, it's about here, just over 200 kilowatts. Okay, so this is all being calculated. In the normal atmosphere, this is the sort of distribution of droplets. So we have many droplets clustered here in the so-called Aitken mode, which is about um, 10, 20, 30, 40, about 50 nanometers peaking. Okay, lots of particles there. And there's a drop off. Then we have uh, many particles also here with about, this is two, 100, 200, 300, 400. This is about 500 nanometers peaking. Many particles there, but there's a distribution of them. And then much greater particles in the coarse mode. Okay, so this is what we get in the natural um, air. So what we want to do is we want to generate particles that are 800 nanometers. There'll be some spread, you know, maybe spread about the thickness of the red line. Okay, so that's the water droplet. That's the salt water with 3.5% salt concentration being generated in these little droplets, 800 nanometers in diameter. Okay, so we're specifically picking the particle size that will make the clouds the brightest. And when the water evaporates from these, if it completely evaporates, we're ended up with 200 nanometer salt particles, whether they be spherical or whether they be cubes. Okay, because often they, they, they crystallizes into, into cubes. And if there's, so if there's complete water evaporation, we'd be here. Sometimes you get, you know, maybe the drop size will decrease in half you know, down to say 400 nanometers from 800, and then there'll be a salt layer on the outside, like a brine, little brine crystal particle. So, so those happen also. Okay, so that's the idea. Now, this is the, uh, now there's a lot of, um, okay, so you can look at, uh, this is some simulations that have been done on the aerosol collection efficiency. So basically you want to be in this mode here without going too much into the detail. You want to be in this particular region so that the particles do not coalesce, do not collide and coalesce and make bigger particles. So th this is the uh, Aitken mode with very small um, aerosols and this is the coarse mode with much larger aerosols. So you want to be in this sweet spot here. So this is the liquid spray is 0.8 micron. If we get this crust formation, it's about half of 0.8. That's the size that you end up with, it's stable. But if all of the water completely evaporates, you get a dry salt residue, which is about 0.2 micron. Okay, and here is the reflectivity of clouds. If we have a 100 meter thick cloud, 200 meters, 300, so on, up to a, a kilometer thick cloud. This is the reflectivity of the cloud um, for a certain number of, of uh, particles. Okay, this is the number of nuclei per cubic centimeter. So over the ocean, it's, we're often very, very low, maybe 10 or 20 nuclei per cubic centimeter, and they're all different diameters. But we want to, so we want to generate our nuclei with our salt sprayers, okay? And uh, you know, as the cloud thickness builds up, we get much higher reflectivity, okay? And this is the uh, this is the amount of liquid that would go into generating those uh, those uh, droplets, okay? So. You can take these curves and you can get rules of thumb. So if we double the nuclei concentration, we get an increase of the reflectivity by about 5.6%. Okay, so this is a good rule of thumb from all of these clouds. So if we, you know, if we, if we double 
the amount of cloud condensation nuclei, we get an increase in the reflectivity of the clouds by about 5.6%. So it's very, very sensitive to the number density, the, the concentration. And then we can change the albedo, okay, uh, of the cloud, you know, is, is double, is that, th this allows you to get that rule of thumb, that 5.6%. Now, how much salt are we talking about? Okay, this is the annual world salt release in gigatons. You know, um, measurements are done at various years and there's a lot of fluctuation, but the average is about here. The average is just over five gigatons of salt released annually in the year. Okay, um, so we're talking about, you know, this is the average. The annual mean value, 5.4 gigatons per year. A thousand spray vessels operating at full power would only release 0 0.033 gigatons per year. Okay, that's negligible compared to the naturally released salt per year. And if the oceans are getting rougher, then there'll be more salt release because it's breaking waves that put the, the seawater into the air, and then the, the water evaporates and you get the salt crystals in the air or the dimethyl sulfide released. Okay, but the spray vessels are you know they're not they're not changing that much they're, we're just creating we're creating particles cloud condensation nuclei of, of a size to optimize the reflectivity of the clouds that do form okay now some people say well you know you're if you're cutting back that much sunlight you'll have a huge effect but this shows that no okay so this is uh five percent grayscales Okay, so this is 5% reflectivity, if you like, albedo, 10%, 15, 20, all the way up to 100% albedo. Okay, now, if you isolate and look just at two bars, it's very hard to see the difference between them. Maybe you need three bars or four bars, which three bars would be 15% difference, four bars would be 20% difference. Okay, um, so to get rid of half the deep ocean heat in 20 years, by treating 15% of the ocean area, that needs a reflectivity change of, take a guess, 2.15%, okay? So you don't notice any difference in the brightness of the sky, you know, over the, over the ocean in general. You just, the effect is so small. The eye, you know, you need about 15 to 20% change to, for it to be detectable by the eye. Okay, now this is the um, solar input as a function of latitude. So we're at the South Pole and the North Pole, and this is in June, the summer, sol the, the summer solstice in the Northern Hemisphere, okay? And this is the amount of sunlight that we get. And of course, uh, you know, it's complete darkness at the other pole in Antarctica, and then, of course, that switches. So the December solstice, the winter solstice, we call it, because most of us live in the Northern Hemisphere, and that's where we have winter. Okay, look at the amount of energy that you get at the high latitudes. You get more energy. That's the in, more solar input in watts per square meter in the high north because you get 24 hours of, of sunlight. Okay, so using this information, we know where we want to position the ship. So this is just showing clouds. Um, this is just showing where the general clouds are located on the planet. And this is where the cloud condensation nuclei concentrations, how they vary on the planet. This is measured by satellite. So this is December, January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November. And you can see the, this is the concentrate cloud condensation nuclei the number of particles per cubic centimeter so you can see either from the deserts and coming off of the land okay and then in the summer as you get warmer there's there's more and more of them quite a few of them and then it drops off here okay uh, so this is very inf good useful information because we want to put our ships in regions of the ocean where there's very few cloud condensation nuclei to generate these highly reflective clouds uh, where they're going to have the biggest uh, impact. And I will continue this in one more video. Thanks for listening.